So my name is Trevor Forsyth. I am uh, in charge of a laboratory that is focused on biological structure determination using um, a variety of techniques including neutral scattering. My involvement within NMI3 is focused on a particular aspect of biological work whereby specific parts of biological macromolecules are selectively labelled so that when these structures are imaged you can see particular parts of the molecule selectively so you can highlight particular parts of the structure and work out how that relates to its biological function. This requires uh, very specialised approaches because um, this, ability, this ability to label biological systems means that you have to feed bacteria and yeast cells on abnormal nutrients, nutrients that they don't like to grow on, and as a result um, there's a range of methods that are needed in order to make it work, and that is what this particular joint reception activity is based on. One of the main advantages of this um, joint research activity within this um, European network is the fact that we have put together a, a variety of people from different countries, researchers in NMR, researchers in neutron methods, and they all bring with them a range of expertise um, that no one partner could provide themselves. And the whole point, or one of the whole points behind this, is that expertise that other people have is shared amongst their collaborators within this network. Algae. So these, these are grown for a variety of different purposes. Uh, part of it is just the production of um, biomass uh, for one purpose or another. Some of it is for producing cellulose and some of it is actually uh, so that we grow up the biomass which then can be digested to produce uh, amino acids which can then be used fed to bacteria uh, which then end up producing specifically labelled molecules of one sort or another, depending on what you put into the algae. What are these? Right, so these are our Valerie's bacteria. Mm -hmm. uh, these are uh, being developed as part of the NMI3 project and these are, are actually cells uh, that produce the protein hydrophobin. And so you can see those colonies there, they're all growing happily away and after a while, this is agar, after a while growing on agar they will be transferred into a liquid culture and from that they will be grown up and produced at very high density and eventually um, the cells will be harvested and broken up and the protein released from within them and that is the thing that is then purified and studied using diffraction techniques uh, which give you uh, a way of imaging the molecular structures that um, exist within those cells. So the process of deuterium labelling or of de deuteration in macromolecular systems uh, involves um, the development of a wide range of techniques uh, and these are complicated because uh, you have to provide very specific um, nutrients and uh, to, in order for them to grow at a reasonable level. They don't like it, whatever you do, so they grow slowly on these media. But um, the, the, the specific things that they have to be fed with are heavy water, which is the, just like normal water, but the hydrogen in it is replaced by deuterium, it's isotope, uh, and it needs to have a food source, or as it's called a carbon source, that is also deuterated, where all of the hydrogen atoms are replaced by this deuterium isotope. So what happens is that you end up with these cultures, something like this, um, where these flasks are full of the organism, in this case it's algae. They're all being grown up on uh, D2O or heavy water, but in the end what you end up with is a labelled um, medium. The main reason for doing this is because deuterium, when it comes to um, molecular imaging using neutron scattering, provides a very strong signal that its isotope hydrogen doesn't. So to a first approximation, the two elements in the molecule are identical, 
um, in terms of the sort of chemical context. That's not 100% true, but it's very closely true. Um, but they give very different signals. And that means if you replace one by the other, you get a very distinct effect on the imaging process. And that means that you can highlight specific parts that are labeled in this way, whilst the rest of the molecule might be um, unlabeled.